very big welcome to you guys to the Diaspora Connective uh, for tonight. We are happy that you're joining us. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, we invite you to share the video to your friends and your family and your loved ones and even some of your foes, friends and foes. Share the video, share it on your timeline, invite others to join us. I hope that you're having a very good evening wherever you are. Um, I know that you probably would have just uh, listened to uh, the Honorable Attorney General on uh, this platform. For those of you watching us on the Guyanese uh, Critic Facebook page, the Break News platform. To those of you watching us there, we bid you welcome. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, share the video, whatever platform you're looking at us on. We encourage you to share the video tonight. We have an open discussion, open line. Uh, I'm taking all your calls. We're going to have a nice uh, conversation. I'm going to try my best to read some of your messages also. So we're looking forward to, um, to talking with you tonight. Uh, so thank you very much. Share, share, share. Share the video. Share it on your timeline. Send it in a message to your friends. And let us have some fun um, on this Tuesday night. We're broadcasting you from the world's uh, financial capital, New York City. And of course, um, I am delighted to be here. Thank you very much to uh, our technical team here at Sky TV. Thank you very much to our technical team down there in Guyana, the Guyanese Critic, the Daybreak News platform. And of course, those of you over there in Canada who are viewing us on Caribbean Showtime, thank you also. Um, so I'm looking forward to having a good discussion with you. Uh, thank you to all of you who showed up. Some of you in your red showed up there at the Jamaica Performing Arts Center um, two days ago to welcome His Excellency the President uh, Mohammed Irfanadi and his delegation here to New York. And what a what a overwhelming welcome it was. For you know, I saw people showed up in their um, 
people showed, showed up in their numbers. numbers. Some, Some people, people I just I just announced it one time. We're red! And the amount of persons I see show up there in the red already for campaign, all proud of their political party, all proud of Guyana's oldest, uh, Guyana's um, um, most respected, uh, Guyana's hardest working, uh, the best political party in Guyana to lift people out of poverty, uh, poverty and to fix Guyana, the People's Progressive Party Civic. And you want to you wanna debate me on that? Bring it. You want to debate me on that? Bring it. I um, so I saw people come up, come out there, and they're all dressed in their red, all happy and ready to showcase Guyana, um, showcase their support for Guyana's one of Guyana's uh, hero of democracy, Mohamed Fanali, president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Um, of course, he was accompanied by the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, you thought. Uh, he was also here. Uh, he was also accompanied by Mr. Robert Passat, who was a Foreign Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs down there in Ghana. So they all showed up and they um, they were, um, you know, interacting. And what a speech, man. What a rousing speech by His Excellency the President. Um, I Everyone walked away there uh, satisfied with um, the information that was brought by His Excellency. And to those who miss it, well, you missed something. Um, I know that, you know, some of you guys would have been at work. Some of you guys already had plans, had other things to do, catching up on the last official weekend of summer. So probably people were out um, going on their road trips and field trips and, and uh, trips abroad and everything. But uh, it was a pack, 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 pack arena. So many people showed up. Uh, a, I, 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 I was over I was uh, I felt very happy um, to see so many people show up to show some so to show their love and appreciation for for the president so and his traveling team so thank you very much and um, I can't wait for us to do it again the next time that the president or the vice president or the prime minister or anyone's coming here we're gonna show up in our numbers and we're gonna show them that based on their work in Guyana to, to lift our people, like I said, out of poverty, to fix up the country, to take Guyana forward, to put Guyana finally on the map as a serious country, to put Guyana finally on the map as a, a developing state, to put Guyana finally on the map where we will be well respected, we have, we'll be proud anywhere we go. To showcase our Guyanese nest. So, thank you, thank you very much. Let me acknowledge some people, and then of course, I like I said, this open line. So we're taking your phone calls right away. You know what happens though? Sometimes, sometimes this phone would not ring once we start the program, and then when we get in close to program time, which is at nine thirty, then everybody wants to call. So don't wait. Call now. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. You know, like when they, um, you remember Miss Cleo? Call me now. Call us, okay? Let's talk. Any issue you want to talk about, let's talk about it. Um, let's say hello to Pam. Let's say hello to Rajendra Mahes, Pam Singh, Rajendra Mahes, Alina Roman, Samantha Ragu, S uh, Sandy Bipat, Vijay uh, Motilal, Dale Henry, Shanti, Ramper, Rampa, Dirat, Rampa Dirat. <laughs> I hope I got that one right. Let's take our first caller. We got a caller coming through, and we'll take our first call. Caller, uh, good evening to you. You're live. Uh, caller, good evening to you. You're live. We can hear you. Blessed and highly favored. Yes. Right. Uh, yes, I think so. Right.
sir sir um i think we may have we may be having some issues with our um with our audio i don't think our our listeners were able to hear you so um i'll ask you let us start again okay yeah as i was saying it's about the fact that this the paper show is killing yes yes and um i was wondering you know why is it the sergeant basco didn't make any disclosures previous to august this year this incident took place in the last year uh march if i can remember rightly and it's only now that we are hearing about the entire thing about you know cover up and bribery allegations or whatever you know these right disclosures. Yes, but I was wondering how previous to that drug bust that they had with the police, we had to be active with his friends. You were not hearing anything before that, you know? Right, right. Only after that issue, we started hearing, where was he all the time, you know? Well, and well, I, well, we, you know where he was found. Um, <laughs> he wasn't found. Uh, where, where, where you first uh, know yeah. of Sergeant Bascom is when you, when he was um, arrested by the Customs anti narcotics squad. Um, okay. Then again, I'm wondering what sort of background he has as a police officer. That, that's a bit, that well, well, happen. the truth is, this is uh, and this is not bashing the police because we've got we've got hundreds of men and women in in uniform in the Guyana police force who go out there and their their mantra every day yeah. is to serve and protect the people. But we got a few bad apples in there, and. Yeah. Um, and they tarnish the entire image of the force. But I am confident in the in the in the leader of the Guyana Police Force at the moment, do? the man at the helm. Right. Well, you know, it got you thinking. Then again, I don't think I mean for the little I have heard and my assumption, bear in mind, I'm just assuming yes. that he was probably employed in one of these um, so called uh, uh, gold people or dying blue whatever on a community part-time basis. If that is so, is it illegal for a police officer to have a, you know, an outside job and so on? If it is so, I don't know if it's true. Right, right. It's an, it, they are all allegations and um, they yes, all have I to have be investigated. He was there. Is that against uh, his employment contract or whatever is it? I am not sure. Well, I have to research. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to give you no uh, incorrect information. <laughs> I know. Okay, okay. I understand it. And all the issue I just wanted to bring up, you know. I appreciate, I, I appreciate you raising that issue. Um, I did manage to go to our president's uh, visit to the other uh, the other day. Well, I heard this one. You saw that card. Oh, you said that a little while ago as well, too. Oh yes, and the the videos are there. The videos are there. Um, it was a packed auditorium. We had people standing yes. outside. We had people standing in the hallway. So yes, packed. I'm actually happy to hear that. I'm yes. a full blooded guy, these, by the way. Very, very proud of what's taking place in our country. Wow, thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Okay. Then. Every thank every you. single guy needs out to be proud. It don't matter what you what you race. Indeed, indeed, it don't matter yeah. what, what party card you hold, whether you hold PNC. I was listening to our AG a little earlier to add to some of the nonsense, Mr. Uh, the actual leader is doing out Yes. The you know those kind of things. Where are these people heading? I can't imagine. Well, know? well, wherever they heading, it's not. It's nowhere close to um to <laughs> to governance. So they could head wherever they want to head. Yeah. Okay. Then. Well, thank you. All right, sir. Thank you very much for okay, coming through. We appreciate your call. Yeah. Thank you. So that's our first call there, and it's his first issue that he wanted to talk about. The first issue that he raised is the issue, uh, with Bascom and um. Um, the allegations by Sergeant Bascom um, as it relates to um, the killing of paper shorts. Um, I don't have any comment on, tho on those issues. Uh, those issues are engaging the court and I have confidence that, uh, that the, the, the leaders, the, the men and women at the helm of the Guyana Police Force at this moment, I have confidence that they will um, they will do a, a, a proper job as it uh, as it relates to this matter. So that's all I'm going to say on this matter. Good evening, uh, caller. You're live. Good evening. Um, I'm calling with this matter about um, the legality of driving in Guyana with a U.S. or any other um, driver's license. Mm -hmm. Okay. My concern is... Um, they have stated you got to show proof 
of entry in the country. Okay. With with what's going on in Guyana, can you take pictures of your passport or show your ticket when you enter? I, I, you, I, or you I gotta walk along with your passport all the time. What is really the proof of entry? Um, well, that I don't know, but I um... um um can you guys you are the critic or well right. basically you are the critic <laughs> or on the government page can um, at least make it because right but but but, but, but sir on, what is what is wrong with walking wrong with some form of identification showing how you enter the how you enter Guyana what is wrong with that okay if you want to drive because. Just like how you can lose the passport, you can also lose the driver's license, right? And your wallet um, and everything else. So why why would you have an issue walking around with the passport and you don't have an issue walking around with your driver's license or your wallet or your there bag, is your a lot of problem. There is a lot of issue because of the past. And not because of what past? really fixed as yet. What past are you when talking about? When people use the T people passport uh, uh, and take the picture oh, out let, and give out let me ask you let me ask that. you that that's okay. nonsense because you can't take a passport and take pictures because they're machine readable now. Yes. You're talking about when they I understand using, that. Saw, they, um, they do have chip they do have chip in the passport too. Right. I guess you so don't that know can't it, happen right? anymore. Okay. What do you okay. mean I don't know yes. that? Okay. I never say you don't know that. You just did said I that? that. I, I apologize <laughs> if I okay. did say that. I apologize, right? But uh -huh. for the previous history, you know what I mean? The previous yeah. history of what is going on. I'm not saying this government is not doing something good. Yes, he is. You know what I mean? But there is still scared in people because they're as much as they could see, right? Mm -hmm. Things is happening, but things still is complicated. All right. So listen, I am not sure what the rules are as it relates to going to Guyana and uplifting and being or able they to could drive actually in Guyana. Or if 24 hours, right? 24 so, or 36 hours, like, 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 like how you... you, you you right, so I understand thought, what you're trying right? to say. So I, yeah. I'm not if sure if give you that time to bring your passport in because everybody, okay, if you go in, if you're going on a tour, like you're going to the beach or whatever, you don't want to walk with your passport. Okay, uh, fair, fair point. Or if you, you know what I mean, right? So that that is something. Um, if they could actually like give people times to publish. Right, because but we do not know, sir. Can I speak the, now? The can I speak now? Yes. We do not know if if that is. I do not know if that is indeed so, because I think that um. I am I'd like like I said, I'm not sure whether you have to walk with proof of um ent entry yes, into, into Guyana all proof the time. Of entry, your proof right. of entry, which means is your passport. Right. So, so how about if you get a photocopy of the passport? I, did they say that, that is that's what not... I'm, I'm asking. If that's right. gonna work, or if if, if the if the police hold you, if they're gonna give you like twenty four or thirty six. I doubt hours. whether the police is gonna hold you if you show them a, a, a U.S. driver's license. I doubt whether the police gonna hold on on you just like that because you show them a driver's license, and you don't have the passport on you. It's not a police thing um, we're talking I about. Mean, look, look, look. I've, I've, I've occurred a lot of incidents, okay, in Guyana. And look, for example, uh, the last time I was there, mm -hmm. here, right? I have, I, and I, I have proof of it. I yeah, go went, ahead. What happened? I went, I spent time, right? For me, that I bought at, at, at the, um, not my permit, but. So the permission to drive in Guyana. Guyana. Yes, the port, yes. Right? Yes. It expired. Mm -hmm. I cannot renew it. Amsterdam. There is only choice of entry, which is you got to go to Georgetown or you have to go to Springland to renew okay. it. Okay. 
Now, uh-huh. here is the thing. My license, when I show them, my license, you know, uh-huh. a U.S. license, for example. Right. Right? You could drive a bus. You could drive. Sir, sir, Kianta. let's stick on the issue that you're talking about in Guyana. It, it is the issue because they only give me car. Listen, <laughs> okay. What are you trying to go and work down there? Trying to charge me for it. Huh? Yeah, if 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 sir, if the permission say you could only drive car, you could only drive car. If you're going to drive a bus, you're looking to get arrested and charged because the permission is to drive that a car. That was the permit. Now, uh, 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 now uh, right, and when you come to the United the States or you go to Bar... Let me speak. You go to Barbados or you go anywhere else, right? And they give you permission to drive a car, you're going to drive a car. So if you go to Guyana, even in Guyana, if your license say that you'll... And, and here in the United States too. If your license say you're licensed to drive a car... You can only drive car. If you go and ride motorbike, you can get a, a ticket here in the United States and you can get arrested in Guyana because that those are the what, laws. That is what I'm coming to. Yes. So why are you going to drive the bus then? Your license said your license said drive car. Why are you driving bus? Minibus. I could drive a minibus. Why? I'm not working higher. My license is paid in that. What license? Yeah. What license state that you could drive a minibus? My U.S. license. The, the U.S. Like, license, your U.S. license to drive in the United States. That's what it says. United States, yes, Mexico, sir. Yes, sir. and, so and I'm Canada. Trying, I am trying to clear this up because my U.S. license. Has right, and what's it doesn't matter where your U.S. Sir, sir, sir. It doesn't matter where your U.S. license say. Right. Once you get a document. For from Guyana, which give you legal permission to drive in Guyana, you have to go by what that document say. And if you do not have a document that say you are legally permitted to ride a motorcycle in Guyana, and you ride it, you are breaching the law. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what your U.S. license say. You know what has happened to some of us? I don't know if this is the case with you, because we 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 are Guyanese and we go back with we make fancy things in we suitcase. And, no, and that's no, our other thing. No, we go there and no, we expect that, we expect to be somewhat entitled. You're not entitled. You have to follow the rules like everybody else. That and if is the why rule... I'm trying. That is why I'm trying to let the ear know uh-huh. exactly because they're saying. Sir, I gotta let you go, man. Um, we we we've exhausted it... our time. <laughs> right. All right, my man. Have a good night, man. Thank you very much okay, for coming through. All right, thanks. Bye. Right. If you go to Guyana and or any country, it doesn't matter what you're entitled to here in the United States. This caller is from uh, a state in the United States where he he can carry a weapon. Does that mean that you can carry a weapon in Guyana or carry a weapon in New York? You call him from a state where you could go into the store and purchase a weapon. You come to another part of the United States, you can't, and you have to abide by those rules. Even though you have that those rights in the state that you live, it does not give you that right here in New York. And you have to abide by those rules. You can't just drive from your state and come to New York with a firearm because you'll be arrested. And it's the same thing. You can't go to Guyana. You feel as though because you you got you can ride motorcycle in the United States, um, you're licensed. To ri- you should be licensed in Guyana. No, sir. It's a country with rules, and we have to abide by the rules. If you want to, a permission to. Oh, it's gone out. No. <laughs> Good evening, caller. You're live. Good evening, my friend. How are you? Good. Good. What's going on? Okay, now let me get make it very quick. Now, in response to the caller or the the, the, the recent caller, mm-hmm. um, for me, I think right that, for example, you see it. I'm a custom broker by profession, and sometimes most of these people come back, and they feel it when they send this stuff. They they should not be paying taxes. But if when they whenever where when wherever they would have come from, right? Whether mm-hmm. they came from the US, Canada, or any one of these forest world nations, 
and they are required to have certain uh, or, or to abide by certain regulations and rules, they cooperatively do it. But when they right. come to Guyana, they feel as though they're higher or better than we over here. If you understand what I mean. I understand what you mean. They come but with it's this not all, impossessive... And it's not, and it's not, um, it's not a majority um, either. Affluent, you have a few, you affluent, know. Um, you know, that we are nothing over here. And so if they come and our rules over here doesn't make sense because it is Guyana. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, I've, I, I've encountered that myself. But like I say, the, the good thing is that the vast majority of, of us go there. We abide by the rules. The rules are this. We are accustomed to a certain way. But once you go there, you have to adjust. It's like you go anywhere else. You go to St. Martin, you have to adjust. Mr. To the Rogers, the first, time I went, I, the first time I went to the U.S., a guy, he and I... Um, we were on the same you. flight. So we were checking in at about the same time in Guyana. And right. he bought, I think it was a candy or something, eat the candy and throw the stuff on the floor at the airport in Guyana. And you know when we when we um when we went when we reached JFK, this same man looked for the closest bin and put his, his garbage and dispose of his garbage. Just right. think about that alone. If you understand what I mean. I understand. And, and I'm happy that you Have raised something. Night, I enjoy thank, the program. Thank, thank you very much. And I'm happy that you that you raised one of these issues that I wanted to talk about and it keep uh it keep evading me all the time. One of the issues I want to talk about is like I don't know what are the rules as it relates to um as it relates to smoking indoors in the in Guyana, sorry. But I felt very offended. Very, very offended when I saw us. Uh, actually, I saw two of them to be honest. I saw two uh performing artists one from Jamaica, one from Trinidad, and both of them, while in the building, while in the building, they pull out whatever they're smoking, they just light up and start smoking and walking out the airport. If there are no rules as it relates to smoking indoors. At, especially at the airport and places like that public those public places important public places there should be rules in place and if there are rules in place that that prohibits smoking in those areas and those two artists did that we should deal we should deal with them condignly because the thing is they cannot they, they should not be allowed to come in our country and break the rules I don't know, so I don't. I don't want to say that I know what the rules are. I'm gonna inquire. I'm happy that this guy spoke about it because I watched it and I was I was offended by that. I'll take another caller. Caller, good evening. You're live. Good evening, caller. You gotta listen to us on the phone. Talk to us on the phone. Hi. Yes. Uh, one minute. Yes. No problem. Yes. Um, I'm I'm calling concern. Um. A Canadian, the problem we have been with going to Guyana with one airline only, Caribbean airline. Right. My concern, Ozzy, Ozzy is a recognized PPP activist. We call him to ask if he could raise this opinion with the president and get something done for us as Canadians. It's, it's, it's a matter that's already engaging the president and the cabinet. It's a matter that they, they, are, they are looking into as we speak and they are having talks already with, um, with Canadian Airlines to ensure that there's not a monopoly um, established there by Caribbean Airlines. So they are in talks and knowing, um, knowing His Excellency and the cabinet, that relief will come very soon. So oh, be on the really lookout. You, Thank you very much. Trust brother. me, be on the lookout for it. Yeah, but they're very aware because if they could go right now and see to get a flight from now to October Mountain, it's 1800 plus tax. All right, so thank you very much, sir. Um, thank you for your call. And. Oh, I cut off on him. Hello? 
Hallo? Ja, wir haben jetzt hier vorne Talking about the Leisen, the Overseas Leisen and Guyana. Driving in Guyana. Okay, um, if they could make it, if the government could make it specifically clear. They will make it clear, sir. You you said clear. that already. So that yeah, right. Because I was har uh, harassed a lot of times. Right. So they will make it clear. I'll make sure that I get the information because and send it to you. They must know every other country legal license what it state. When they look at it, they must know. Or if they if they have a scan. So what do you, sir, 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 sir? You're getting me upset. I'm sorry. For so that. what you're trying to say that the people that re read your license in Guyana didn't know how to read it? That's what you're trying yes. to say? That's one. Well, and that, that's nonsense. And that's the nonsense. Police, so I would not. And the police that I would not have you disrespecting our people like that. I'm very sorry. That's not going to happen here. What are you trying to say that the people at Guyana that working at the airport can't read your license? You are very disrespectful. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Exactly, but I have already explained that. Not because whatever is on your license here give you the permission to drive there. You understand me? So a guy that uh, a guy that driving us to have a CDL license here have the right to just go in Guyana, pick up a truck, and and just drive and work because he has a CDL license here and he can drive um he can drive those um semi trucks here. That, that can't work. And no, it's not. I I'm not. Listen. If, if, if there are issues that we're discussing that requires us to, to, to bring certain issues up and talk a certain way about any agency, it is welcome. But we're not going to tolerate nobody calling here and trying to disrespect and saying that people can't read your license to, uh, properly and that sort of thing. That's, that's nonsense. We're not going to tolerate that. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, our telephone line is open. We're taking your calls. I, I would love to read some of the comments because I can imagine how <laughs> I can imagine some of our people probably went to school with this guy. Um, let's see. Let me read some of the comments. Um, good. Uh, once again, to all of you who have who have taken time out to to make comments, want to say thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it. Um, I wonder if we. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Good evening, caller. Yeah, good night, Mr. Rogers. What's going on? Yeah, I'm calling I'm calling about the guy that call about the license, right? But you see <laughs> a lot know. of these people, when they go to get the permit, they mm -hmm. don't find out no information. Because at one yeah. time I go back to Guyana every year. I live here over yeah. thirty something years. The first time I get a permit to drive in Guyana is in two thousand two. I'm a class A driver. I drive tractor trailer. When I went mm -hmm. back there, I asked the guy that issued a permit. You know, I'm a class A driver. Can I drive right. trucks or anything in Guyana? He said, yeah, sure. This permit is telling you you could drive a certain vehicle. But if you got your class A license and you, you show it to the officer, it covers everything. Right, because I'm sure they would put on that piece of paper what you are, are entitled to drive. However, you no longer require to get that permission to drive at the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard so, about that. You know, but yes. what, 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 what I'm saying, you know, like before, like people, the guy was talking about the permit, you know. Right. You you could drive, if you qualify to drive a truck, a trailer here, you could, you could drive in, that in Guyana too, because okay. you qualify for that. All right. All right, I'll make sure I do my research so next time I come here I have all that information. Yeah, because thank I, you find very out, much. I find out about that since 2002. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I, man. I, have a good one. I appreciate your call. All right. Good evening, caller. This is the Diaspora Connected. You're live. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Rogers. How are you? I'm fine. And, you know, what I'm, I, I just want to touch on two points. Um, yes. In, um, in the 1970, I drank the Kool-Aid and became a member of the People's National Con Dress. Uh, uh, you know, ex uh, uh, please put the accent on con. <laughs> you understand? And yes. these guys, man, um, you know, it, it just sticks me to my stomach to see them keep lying to people. 
just plain devout liars. I, 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 you know, I've never voted for the PP, never. But I've been in Congress place, at, and some of the people that I was associated with in the PNC are I'm disgraced to see them. Sir, sir, I'm Today. happy that at least you know you're coming through and you're and you're being you're being straight up with us. You know what I mean? And that's all oh, we yeah. need. We need people to have to be able to have frank discussions. And I know that I'm going to be one to admit that the PPP is not a all perfect party and they will make mistakes. And that is where the opposition is supposed to seize on those mistakes and highlight them and, and critique I, the government. But they, they ain't got time with nobody. They, all, they only care about this race, 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 race. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, I, I you know, I'm, it, maybe because I, I, um, I married an Indian woman. You know? <laughs> but... <laughs> They're trying to say the woman convert you. I would like to say one more thing, and right. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing that um, President Ali um, make the promises, all the promises he made, he keeps them, and um, I hope that um, this country get to realize what a great president we have, sir. And um, you, you know he's doing everything, and they will never see another president like him. And uh, for the People's National Con. Congress, who never won an election, they, you know, they got to go and start all over again. All right. They went into Moko and created one big problem in Moko. Right. <laughs> and, all, and, and now and they came out clones. They, Imagine yeah, you calling that, yeah. your supporters clones. So they came out, they came out, um, they came out from Moko weaker than they went in. And then, that's what <laughs> happened in every community, you know, all the community, they go in Buxton. And they rile up the people in Buxton, they leave Buxton, they come out weaker. They rile My up the people here. in Nance Grove, the people in Nance Grove rile up, they go to Nance Grove, keep a meeting, nobody ain't really sure for, for support their meeting. They go to Linden, same thing. Everywhere they go, all their communities, people are turning they have done. Linda. They have people, done absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah. When 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 Corbyn was in in the government, when Corbyn was was in at the head of the party, he used to wait until a couple of days before election and come and kiss black babies in, in Moko. You know, mm -hmm. um, they got streets in Moko here because my my daughter lives there right now, and she's right. pregnant and cannot dare jump in a car to come out there because mm -hmm. of the holes in them roads, bro. They have not fixed, and I, I don't understand if this is your constituents and you claiming that though you love black people like like this, this clown running around telling people you, you you're supposed to look after your own. Well, as a political party, you're supposed to look after the country. That's why you get into politics to look after the country. Jesus, but they, they weren't even focused on yeah. their own. They didn't focus on nobody. They were focused on their own self. Yes. That's all That's they want to do. Fill their pockets. On. Yep. That is why, for example, pockets. why you think, have you ever seen in the history of parliament anywhere that a person put up on their social media as their official portfolio, shadow minister? <laughs> One thing, you know, those people take the cake. The attorney general said that people strip it bad, and he's absolutely correct. Let when when, when, when a man's a, I can give you an opportunity to speak, sir, so please forgive me for cutting in. A no man's problem, a no Walton Dazir, right? It was, was it her or Coretta McDonald that, McDonald that called the people clown? I think it's a man's, right? Yeah, I think it's a man's. When a man's a call those people clowns, she should be looking in the mirror. <laughs> she should be looking in the mirror. It's simply amazing, these people, man. God, look, let me tell you something. If our people got to get anywhere, they're going to have to lean on some other people, not these folks. Here, I, I, like I said, when um, I was all with the 2015 when they got elected, and then I watched Clive, um, um, Clive, Clive Thomas, yeah. He was the head of uh, Sara Soko or some one of the other yes. parties, that, 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 that uh, entity. He was making over $4 million a month and never arrested, never had a case. None. And then this guy Zero. comes on um, on, on um, Kisun Gildari show and says, oh, we, we had we had cases that settled. <laughs> you know, what a pathological oh, liar. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. But, you know, um, I, like, and the attorney general said it tonight, they don't even try to lie. <laughs> they don't care. They just open their mouth and whatever comes out, they just let it go and then they say, 
Even if they got to go change it tomorrow, they just go change it tomorrow. Just watch it dead in your face like they didn't say something else the day before. Okay, and sir. If you Thank ask you them, I just wanted the people to that that uh, a former PNC. <laughs> It's I'm happy, I'm happy, my brother. Congress. <laughs> it <is>. Yes. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for coming through, man. I'm 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 very happy when we get callers like that. And even if the caller called to say, man, look, um, you know, these are the things that he doesn't see and he doesn't agree with, we were gonna take that call too. Cause that's what we do. We're not like the rice eater. We don't gonna being a block nobody from commenting and stuff like that. This is a democratic show. It's open for everybody, open for any views. You understand me? You come crooked, we go straight near. Good evening, caller. Good evening, caller. Your life. Good night, Mr. Rogers. Good night. Thanks for this program. Now we were we needed one like this. <laughs> oh, you you're welcome. Uh, Thank you too for yeah, uh, watching. Yeah, I, I met you at Smoky Park and you're so busy when the other events happening, so I can't get to meet you. Anyway, All right. I want to share two things. Um, yes. Uh, concerning the guy with the license, I think he has a valid point too, because let's say for me, I'm planning to go back. Mm -hmm. I want to drive. You have to show some some, part, some sort of document that you arrive in the country, because this is related to the 60 months. I know Ghanaians will be there four or five months and they still want to drive to, you know how. Right. So, I just find out if we can have our passport photo, photocopy and we can go up with that. Because if I'm going to the beach, I'm going to the market, I don't want to walk with it. So forgive me because I should have that information at the back of the okay, palm okay. of my hand. I'll be listening and not, I'll keep in. But on Thursday, I promise you that I'll be able to talk, um, uh, give you factual information and all that because I'll go do my research. Okay, sir. I appreciate okay. you. I got that. anything Next else. Yeah, I want to share this way with um the the, fe the fellow audience, the fellow listeners. I got my house and land in Guyana. Are you here? And 2017, mm -hmm. I wanted to sell it, but I wasn't getting the price rate because people say, "Man, this country get bad. We can't invest mm -hmm. in it." Are you hear? But mm -hmm. soon as PPP win, I'm getting more than what I, I was asking for. I said, wow. "Why is it changed?" He said, "Things change you now." You see yeah, the difference. People... Yep. You see how people we thinking and he's thinking of Ghanaians and the hope. And this is not Indian people. This is black and Indian offering more now. So I just want to share that with with the audience to show that how much things right. have changed. Thank I you, sir. Good night. Thank thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And those are the calls that will um would certainly um make us feel good here because these are the testimonials of people. Who, who would have experienced for themselves um, uh, when they attempted to, to do some degree of business in Guyana and um, under the APNU and the type of things they have experienced. And now that the PPP is in power, everybody wants a piece of Guyana, even those that are not Guyanese are trying to get a piece. Good evening, caller, you're live. Hi, good evening, Rogers. I want to make sure on? I love it. And um, I get one Thank comment you. tonight. Mm -hmm. This guy who called you earlier with the license issue, this, this guy, that's not yeah. going to nephew. He's a jackass. And the second thing, the, <laughs> when, the, when, when the attorney general announced the license for driving Guyana, he did said you could photocopy your passport and walk with oh. it. So I don't know if these people don't follow the news properly or that. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Th thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Let me say it. I ain't said nothing. You ain't hear it from me. So don't blame me. Anyway. Yeah. You know what? We love every single one of you guys. You guys you guys keep this show going. Um, like I say, if you if your views differ from, from us, that's no problem. We welcome them. Certain shows you yeah, can't come on and comment and call in and stuff like that, you know. You get banned, you get blocked. Caller, good evening. Hi, good night, Mr. Rogers. What's going on? How are you tonight? Blessed and highly favored. I like that. Sir, I How just you want doing? to make a brief I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I just All came right. back from Mecca, Medina. <laughs> oh, nice, 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 nice. So you come with some blessings, man. 
Yes, I was in Medina and Mecca. I went there for the Umrah. So I came back to New York with some blessings, and I'm taking that to Georgetown on Friday. Can you can you send some on this show? I will send you some photographs as soon as I get off. Some... I want blessing. Keep the photograph and send me blessing. Well, I send you look, blessings too. Look, well, look, brother, another type of blessing is with the, with the Asri Fengian, you know, when they see you come, you come and say, not even, not only when you come, so let me don't say, and as, you know, some people see it say, bless me up, no problem. <laughs> so that's a blessing I want. I want the blessing that you went and received in Medina. I felt <laughs> like I was in heaven, so I will share some of that with you. I appreciate you. What's on your mind? Brother, but I just want to make a comment. I'm not hearing Yes. You. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, we can hear you. When I listened to my president, the Excellency Airfront Ali, mm -hmm. after two years in this job, this man is so eloquent now. This man is sounding like he really wants his job. You know? Yes. This man is full of confidence. I've listened to some interviews with this guy with various news entities from all over the world. And this man is well-rounded. He's doing his homework. Of course. He's doing his homework. And we as Guyanese, we have to be proud of this president. He's a young you. president. And he's eloquent. And we have to support him. I, I, I certainly agree with you. And what do you think about um about the opposition? Well, I'll tell you something, my friend. I don't mm -hmm. want to rule out the opposition. But when I think okay. about what the opposition brings to the table, they don't have anything good in mind. I mean, if they speak about apartheid state hmm. and, and, you know, and, and, and all this nonsense, we don't want to hear about apartheid state in Guyana, you know. You know, coffee, yes. coffee, coffee. Who fought the the British and the uh, and the colonizers for our freedom? He would not be impressed with what the opposition is doing right now in Guyana. Yeah, he would not be oppressed. He would not be impressed. Well, uh, we don't even need to go all the way back to coffee. We could start right at another freedom fighter, Nelson Mandela. Imagine you were, you, were, you you know what would Nelson Mandela think of those African leaders in Guyana who are saying that Guyana is an apartheid state? It means that they're downgrading the sufferings of the Black South Africans. That's what you're doing. You know how many people? Definitely. You know what apartheid did to some people. In South Africa, some people were yes, uh, some you people are still carrying around scars of that. Some people lost their loved ones. Thousands of people were brutalized and murdered and all kind of thing because of apartheid. People could not have gotten to marry the people they love and all these kinds of things. Definitely. And people were treated as second class citizens. Here is an Definitely. idiot by the name of Kadaki Amsterdam. Oh, we protesting, we protested in front of GCOM. I did protest against apartheid state. You could not have protested in an apartheid state. And that idiot didn't even realize how much he was contradicting himself. Well, I uh, saw one of your viewers say the caller should come back to Guyana. Which one? I, I just saw something there on, on, on the clip. But I want oh, to oh, oh. address I want to address some of the viewers and the callers. I've lived in Guyana for the last eight years. Okay? Okay. I've lived in Guyana for the last eight years. I'm not hiding. I'm not one of those who is in America. Oh no, I don't think I don't think the comment was meant for you. Definitely, I don't think that comment was meant for you. I don't hope don't, not because don't because follow up. Yeah, maybe they, maybe it's me they want to come back to Guyana. Well, I'll be there um, very soon. Real boots well, on the ground, Mister Ozzy. <laughs> another thing I want to address: mm -hmm. the ownership of land in Guyana. It, it's going to become very controversial going forward. I hope not. And uh, I really want our governments to pay attention to Guyanese owning land in Guyana and uh, try to institute something that makes sense for our people and the next generation of Guyanese. Well, 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 sir, I think the government is focused on Guyanese owning um, land because first, one of the first requirements... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To apply for a plot of land in Guyana is that you have to show that you're Guyanese full stop. You're right. I saw Not Guyanese a lot of... living in Guyana, right. Guyanese living in Canada, and Guyanese living I in Baltimore. You. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Well, I'm happy about that because I see there's a lot of development there in the housing sector in Guyana. And lots of people of are getting land and so forth there. And right. housing. Yeah, lots of Guyanese yeah. people. I I wish that they would take down that 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 white elephant that they built on Dorman Park and build some housing there for those people in Lodge. Yeah, but then the the um the the PNC is gonna say because it's uh, black people build it, they break it down. No, 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 my friend, Ozzy, that place has more has more wood ants than anything else. Yeah, it's got a giant giant wood ants nest. But sir, let me take that one more caller. That place is an okay? eyesore, and you have a nice evening, sir. Thanks for taking the call. You 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 do the same, man. Thank you very much for coming I, through. I'll send you i send you some of the flex on Mecca. Okay, well, thank you. Take care. Wow. So um let me see if I can read some some of your comments before I actually um um take another caller. Uh let's see here. Oh, we're 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 almost out of time. This person was trying to call, so let's take this caller. Caller, good evening. You're live. Good night, OC. How are you? Bless, bless. What's going on? Yeah. I was happy to see you on the stage Sunday night, man. You guys did a good Oh, you were job. there? Yes, I shook your hand on the stage. I was the one from the oh. bottom calling on you and also Zubi. <laughs> I, to be yeah. honest, man, so many people came to me at one point. I had to remind them that I'm not the president. The president is over there. So. <laughs> yeah, I took. I, but I um, took, I, yes. I also took picture with him uh, and uh, mm -hmm. also the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Right, right, right. So, um, wait, what's um, what's and the issue you want us to talk about tonight? You just want um, us to know how happy you are that. Yes, I am happy. I am so happy. You were there, and uh, the president was there, and I like his speech. And I like his funny jokes, sir. Especially All the right. one, uh, the same way you t you took the plane and come to America, the same way you could take the plane and go back to Guyana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think he was right. All right. Yes, sir. All right. All okay, right. Thank you, you very care, much sir. for coming through. Thank you. You take care, too. Okay. Well, All ladies right. and gentlemen, um, we had we had lots of phone calls tonight. Uh, we spoke about everything. We give everybody an opportunity to come through. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. I was hoping that um, uh, one of the PNC defenders would have called and then I would have, you know, we would get into a nice heated debate um, on one of the issues. But what are they going to call and talk about? What are they going to call and talk about? Are they going to call and tell us about Guyana becoming a apartheid state? Guyana, um, the PPP is a drug running party. I could tell you all the things I say. Guyana is a apartheid state. Guyana, oh, oh, the new talk now. Is um uh no they say KKK in Guyana they say they say KKK in Guyana Guyana gets KKK I don't know I don't know I only KKK I know about this KKK gas station in Guyana but I don't know but there there's <laughs> in, in um back in Linden when I used to grow up I you see in Jumbi right. You, they, you just got to do certain things. What y'all used to do? I, I think you just got to wash your face when you rice, you throw the rice and the rice thing. You just put your face over the rice for wash your face and you're not going to see John B anymore. Um, but, you know, we, none of us are seeing um, the John B doctor. Whatever happened to him? The John B doctor, Gavin Machus, we're not seeing him. I, 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 I had to send out a um, uh, post up on my Facebook. Whatever happened to him? What have you happened to Rickford Bork about shutting down Queens and the president not welcoming the United States, especially in Queens, especially in New York? What about all those talks? Where are they now? <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all the time we have. I had an amazing time with you guys. Can I um, say some hellos again before we close? Um... Hello to Samantha Ragu, uh, Sandy, Bipat, Vijay, Motilal, Dale Henry, Shanti, Arjun, Jawahir, um, Sabrina, Chris, D, Shirley, Rajendra, Shamo, Carlos, Carla, um, Tan, Wahab, Wabib, 
Derek, Lila, Cameron, Normala, Sally, Mala. So many people. Guys, I, I, so many people. I am happy that you guys took the time out to spend some time with us tonight. Tonight we had an open line. We spoke about anything you guys wanted to talk about. Thank you very much for coming through. To those of you who share our video, we certainly appreciate you. And we appreciate uh, those of you who call us and tell us your stuff because, you know, um, like Sherrod, we might need your business. No. But, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. On Thursday, we'll be right back here. We'll be talking politics. We'll be talking the issues. We'll be discussing all these things. And, of course, we'll be taking your call live from George and Guyana next, uh, on Thursday, all being equal. Until then, I am your host, O.C. Rogers, on behalf of my technical team in Guyana at Daybreak News and the Guyanese Critic uh, Facebook page, my technical team here at Sky TV New York. Thank you very much. Have a very pleasant evening and I'll see you guys again on Thursday. Be safe out there. Goodbye.